Hi, this is Gia, and you're listening to Stories About You and Me, where we explore the messy journey of self-management towards pursuing your goals. I have yet another guest like we always do. I met her through Metro Manila Toastmasters Club, and we're going to be checking in on her. Bago tayo mang chika. Hi, Ate Lexi. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm okay. I just came from coaching one of my favorite clients. Ayan. Like right before this. If you want to be her next favorite client, you can hit her up on Instagram later. We'll be plugging it. Because Ate Lexi is actually a coach. And before kasi, nakita ko yung Instagram post niya. Nagbabodybuilding rin pala siya. So I wanted to look into that story and how we can explore it. Kasi I think most women, parang hesitant sila sa bodybuilding or like male-dominated space. So yeah. Ate, can you tell us your story about your experience in the bodybuilding competition? Because I saw it in your Instagram post. As in, sobrang buff mo dun. So, before I got into bodybuilding, I used to be a triathlete. I used to race competitively um, locally and internationally. Mm. So I would rank like all world athlete in like online. You can see my name there, like in the top 10%, top 5%. But I got into an accident late 2018-ish. I tumbled down my bike and I kind of got traumatized because my hand hit the Well, I rolled down and then my hand hit a barbed wire and I had to yank my hand out and it left a bunch of scars. I don't know if you can see them, but like there, yeah, you, you can see them. It left a bunch of scars and I really took a step back after that and I moved on. I looked for something new and I found bodybuilding. And when I did start with the bodybuilding, I was relatively big. I'm not the usual girl who... My body type isn't for bodybuilding. And a lot of people, when I did start out, was telling me that my legs were too big, that I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't be able to compete. They tell me na, pwede na, but don't expect, or you can try, things like that. Those were the things being thrown at me. But I decided to try and pursue bodybuilding, which I did, and I competed once. And... Despite not placing the top three, I did feel really, really good afterwards because I did see the huge difference from where I started to where I got to. At how did you move on from... Because a triathlete, how, how many, for how many years were you doing that? I started racing 2016. I started racing competitively also 2016 all the way to 2018. So for two years straight. Yeah. So could you say that it's your ikigai or you found your purpose there? Parang you really loved it at the time? I really just completely fell in love with the sport. It was just this accident that stopped me. Because when I fell, my, my watch broke, my bike broke, everything broke. Like the handles of my bike were twisted and I still had to bike from where I fell all the way to where my car was parked. And then they had to bring me to the hospital to get me checked. So during that time, Ate, how did you overcome that experience? I'm a very active person. I don't like sitting down. So I needed to find a way to fill in the huge gap that triathlon left me with when I did stop training for triathlon. How long were you were you hospitalized for that? No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I refused to be hospitalized. They just pulled out the stones and like gave me a tetanus shot. I had the bruise of like the bike handle here. It was just a lot. I had the wind knocked out of me. It was hard to breathe for a while. But I didn't have any broken bones, luckily. So it didn't really stop me. I rested for like two or three days. And then I started going back to the gym. Active talaga. That's the coach that you need, guys. Yung talagang active. Yung tipong na-accidente na push pa rin. Kakaibang, kakaibang coach ka ate. Okay, I get it. Okay. So at a, during that time na nagba bodybuilding ka. Yeah. Like having to hear those comments that okay lang naman yung legs mo, okay lang naman yung katawan uh, mo pero hindi ka para diyan. Were yeah. you ever insecure about that during the time and how did you handle yung mga ganong notion? 
I was a really fat kid, so I did have a lot of body image issues for, from the very start. Without people having to tell me that I was fat, I always felt like I was more on the bigger side of things. Like I, I, my legs were too big, my face too round, which is still a, an issue even when I when I post online. People always point out na, but ang bilog ng mukha mo or parang but walang nangyayari sa legs mo. It's a constant barrage of that, especially now that I'm a coach. But when I was dealing with it, nung nagbabodybuilding pa ako, I just decided to try my best not to let it get to me and just focus on my coach and what he was telling me to do. So I just stuck to the program, even if I didn't want to anymore. I was super tired, burnt out, wala na kong gana. And the pressure of like seeing everyone else progress so fast and me slow, parang ang bagal. It will mess you up a little bit talaga. Like you can't help but like look at the mirror and be like, but walang nangyayari. Uh, I wrote a lot. I journaled a lot. I took a lot of photos. And over time, I kind of got over it. But sometimes, talaga, you can't help but compare, lalo pag on social media, and you see all these girls competing for bikini contests. Yeah, I think yun din yung pinakamahirap na part. Because if you're like a social media content creator, or even if you're not, you tend to compare your body to other people. And it's not something that's easy to overcome. Kasi parang you want progress especially when you see other people na mas mabilis yeah. sila mag-progress as compared to you. So, yeah. in journaling ate and in keeping tabs sa mga photos mo, did it help you in a way? Like, mentally? Kasi yun yung pinakamahirap na part ng pagmamanage ng sarili mo. Eh. Like, how you manage your mental health and also how you stop comparing yourself to others. Because you really can't tell yourself na, oh, hindi na pwede kasi it's Uh-oh. a defense mechanism din eh. So, mm. did it help you in a way? And were there other things that you applied tapos yun yung nakatulong din sa'yo talaga? Journaling really helped. Like, writing down how I felt. What I do is, I'd write affirmations like, you're good enough. Stuff like that. You're good enough. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing well. I'm thankful. Like, what I'm thankful for. Stuff like that. I'd write that first and then, Below that, I'd write down what I found was bothering me. And then I'd write down solutions. And then I'd keep on going back and forth, checking it kung na, nakapag-move on na ako from it. And it really took a really, really long time. As in, a super duper long time. And yeah, sometimes, yeah. I, I'm sobrang open naman when I tell people that there are days when I wake up, kahit na, when I look at the mirror and I'm just like, Bakit ganyan? Like, I still do have a little bit of body dysmorphia. I think a lot of people struggle with that talaga. That's completely normal. It sucks, but it's completely normal. And it's, I think, one of the best things to do talaga is if you're on your weight loss journey, you don't compare. I know it's so hard, but if you can't deal with it, just click not interested or just hide their stories first. Like, that's the best way to deal with it. Lalo na pag competitive kang tao or like, you get insecure super fast seeing kahit friends mo progressing faster than you. Just hide the story. It's fine. They won't know naman eh. <laughs> I think that's really effective as well. Kasi kung hindi naman siya nakakatulong sa'yo and nakaka-distract siya, it's not a bad thing technically because yeah. it's like a part of you na you haven't healed yet or you haven't moved on from or hindi yeah. mo pala talaga kayang i-handle so muting them it's okay and I also agree na hindi naman nila makikita so oh. if it helps it helps you know yeah. like if it's the next doable action wala namang problema and I feel like if they're really your friends and kailangan mo siya for your mental health they shouldn't You'll make understand. it a big deal yeah. Yeah. And also, at I agree with the journaling part. I also have my journal right there. <laughs> Katabi ng laptop ko. Kasi kanina, parang I was feeling really down. So, I had to like journal out my thoughts. And ako kasi, yun din yung ginagawa ko. Like, after journaling my thoughts, I write down my action plan. Yeah. Kasi wala ka naman magagawa sa emotions mo. And sometimes, parang it becomes a cycle. So, yeah. the best way para ma-handle mo siya is if you can write down what are your action plans sa nararamdaman mo. Para yeah. next time, even if you feel the same way, at least a little better. Oo. Yeah. Diba? So, yeah. ate, how did you handle na, have you ever heard yung mga sinasabi nila na 
women should not be muscular. Kasi you're a, you're a coach eh. And, I grew up with that. Ganun? I grew up with that. I grew up with that. I grew up with my parents telling me that I shouldn't be powerlifting. I grew up with my parents telling me that I shouldn't be racing triathlons. I grew up with my aunts telling me na ah baka matakot na yung maniligaw sa yo kasi sobrang batak mo na or um I'd have also my parents and like not just my parents like a lot of people tell me na parang nakakatakot ka na kasi nagbubuhat ka stuff like that. Honestly it never bothered me. Thank thank God yung part na yun, it never really bothered me na parang when people would tell me na guys would be too intimidated kasi I I know my, I don't know, like, I guess my mom raised me pretty well to know my worth. So, yeah. kung hindi nila ako kaya, eh, di wag. Parang yun yung mindset ko ever since. Pero ate, how, what advice can you give sa mga babaeng insecure about being too muscular? Because some people, parang, I hear some of my friends, parang may misconception pa rin, ayoko mag-workout kasi baka maging muscular ako masyado. Okay. Lifting for women won't make you bulky because you don't have testosterone in your body. Mm-mm. So that's something that you shouldn't worry about unless you're taking steroids or unless you're really bulking. And it takes years and years of bulking to gain the muscle that you think you're gonna gain agad-agad. It's, it doesn't work like that. And the misconception again, if people find you too much, then they're not meant to be in your life. That's it. So if they find you too muscular, then okay, they can leave. If they don't appreciate how you look or who you are, they can leave. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the people who are at your level or at your vibe will stay, will choose to stay. Yun yung pinaka take away ni ate. Like, really know your worth in terms of like how your body looks like or what you're doing. Kasi you will never intimidate people who are meant to be in your life. Ama. Parang, if they're at your level, they're at your level. And also ate, yung mga nang gaganan kasi, sila usually yung nang i- na-i-intimidate. Yeah, oo, totoo. Parang oh, yeah. matapansin ko sa mga tao, when they comment about, ay, masyado kang ambisyosa, sila yung intimidated na you always go for what you want kasi people are above who are above you they're never gonna comment on something na ganun That's so true. when so when they ask you to size yourself or to shrink yourself down it's because they're intimidated by you hmm. and it's never your fault i never. think diba y- yun kailangan ma-realize ng ibang tao eh. is it is if you're not really comfortable with other people, what they're saying, what their comments are, then leave. It's completely okay. Yeah. Sobrang okay lang talaga. Yeah. Di naman sila kawalan kasi. Parang feel, yung ibang tao, parang feeling nila kawalan sila. Wala namang ano eh. Wala namang ambag. So, ate, were there hurtful comments that you received about your body? Can you tell us about a specific experience? Na you- ah, sobrang dami. Sobrang dami. Uh, okay, okay. Wait, do you want it from people I actually know or from strangers? Because those are two different two different things. Eh. Okay, so let's first dive into like people you know because they're really close to you okay. and immediate. And then people na strangers. Siguro uh-huh. sa comments and dami. Uh, from people I know, it's usually my mom. <laughs> my, mom, yeah. my, mom my mom is my biggest supporter and my biggest hater. So like I get the most comments from my mom. Yeah. When she tells me I'm too fat na or um she tells me I'm too bulky or sometimes she goes, "Oh, payat mo." So it's like a range of like good and bad. Mm-hmm. When it comes from people I know and I care about and I know they're coming from a place where they're trying to care, yeah. it doesn't hurt as much. Well, like when I was a kid it hurt, but now I know that it's coming from a place of care lang naman. So that I can shrug off. Like, even when my titas are like, ang taba mo na. Like, I just ignore them na lang kasi hindi naman nila katawan eh. They don't know naman what's going on with me. So, yeah. it doesn't really matter. When it comes to strangers, it depends. Namamatol kasi. <laughs> namamatol. Oh, okay. oh my gosh, favorite ko yung pangpapatol mo. Pag nakikipagbardagulan ka, nanunood ako, tapos yeah. nakatawa lang ako. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it's comments on a post, Uh-huh. Usually, I just ignore it unless it's super rude. But um, g- cite examples, Ate. What are those really rude comments? Parang 
hindi ba nahihiya yung nanay mo na ganun yung itsura mo or parang lalaki ka ba? Like, it's, what? May mga ganun parang lalaki ka ata eh, or parang plastic surgery yan. Mga ganun, stuff like that. That's really rude. I just ignore or I delete lang. I, I've had that, those comments na lalaki ka ba? Plastic surgery. Yan. I get that often. So often. Lalo na when I post like glutes or like naka-sports bra ko in shorts. People are like, ah, may pinagawa ka liposuction because some of the people know na galing ang sobrang taba. I've gotten that liposuction comment. Those kinds of comments I ignore because I know my body and I'd never do that to my body. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. But when it's sa live ko and people are questioning, I think yeah, it's not even about... It's a mix eh. Because during my lives, the people who hop on to hate talaga, they're coming from a place na they don't know me and I don't know why. Parang trip lang siguro, troll, mga ganyan, naghahanap lang ng gulo. I don't also get so hurt with that. It's just fun, like, breaking them down. <laughs> it's, it's fun lang kasi akala kasi nila mabait, I think, lahat mong magla-live. And I always tell the people who watch my life, masama ugali ko. Like, as a joke, I always go, masama ugali ko. Pero yeah. lang, if nagka- nagkataon na may kabardagulan, hindi sila mabigla. Na parang, why are you so mean? But I just usually shrug it off. I think the most painful comments talaga come, but I understand for other people, the most painful comments come from strangers and I just want to remind everyone that it's not their body, wala silang ambag. If they don't feed you, if they don't pay for your gym, if they don't pay for your supplements, wala silang ambag, wala silang say sa body. Yun lang. Sa akin, ate, ano, natatawa talaga ako kapag ka, ano, nakikipagbardagulan ka. Pero I think kasi minsan when people tell you comments na you're not really comfortable with, especially, mm-hmm. hindi naman, I think like commenting on someone's body is really sensitive because you don't yeah. know kung sino may eating disorder. Oo. Uh, yeah, even, yeah, yeah. Actually. Even if somebody's fit, you don't know if they have an eating disorder yeah. or they've That's recovered. Possible. That's possible. From eating disorder. Kaya I think like commenting on someone's body is really rude. Yeah. Whether it's a cup, coming from a place of like care concern yeah yeah yeah, yeah. kasi parang ako kung hindi ka like nutritionist or like yeah. coach nila then i don't mm-hmm. think that it should be necessary so if you need to yeah. block someone na uh, comment ng comments sa body mo or if you need to delete a comment yeah uh, kasi it's your men- it's for your mental health din eh. and the mm-hmm. thing about the brain it doesn't know kasi how to handle yung negative comments and people have different emotional bandwidth kasi like Uh-oh. how i can perceive a hate comment can be different mm-hmm. from you lalo na yeah. if it's about your body especially if somebody is yeah somebody is suffering from eating disorder or if yeah. they've recovered from eating disorder mm-hmm. napaka sensitive nila about those. Kaya... Disorders and body dysmorphia. Yan yeah. yung dalawa na... Kaya when I see people commenting on other... Mas nagagalit pa ako if I see other people commenting on other people's posts. Doon nakikipag-away talaga ako. Like, yeah. talaga nakikipag-bardagulan ako. Minsan yun naisip ko na parang what if like someone like someone sa tic- actual like TikTok sees me and it's like ano ba to? content creator tapos nakikipag-away. Pero, ang mean kasi sometimes, like, I have friends who try to post, who used to try to post fitness content pero medyo chubby sila or like, medyo hindi pa sila at that point where they're comfortable with their body and they're just trying out and people are like, ang taba mo. And I'm like, that's so mean. Yeah. You don't know what this person's going through. Malay mo ba, may piko siya, malay mo ba. There's so many disorders that can actually stop you from getting super fit. And being super fit requires a lot of sacrifice talaga. I agree. Kaya, kaya, I don't know, people should just be more sensitive kasi you don't know what people are going through eh. I think yung iba rin kasi ate, parang trend din. Kung ano yung parang, oh, this is like skinny. Skinny yung Uh-oh. ano trend sa fitness. So if you're not skinny and you don't fit in the beauty standard, yeah. quote unquote, Parang people are gonna come for you if you put out fitness content. Kasi iisipin nila, o oh, paano ka naging authentic na fitness content creator mm-hmm. kung hindi ka naman fit? Yeah. And yeah. parang what if they create content to inspire other people? Parang mm-hmm. they want other people along the way as they progress in their journey. Hindi mo naman yeah. alam yung intention nila, di ba? Yeah. 
So, kapag ganun, wag ka talaga makikinig kasi yung iba, ang dami talagang sinasabi. Wala namang ambag talaga. And sometimes, people just want to hit on you lang. Wala lang. Yeah. Nakipan ka for that day. Or, ako kasi, I know some, like, some of the people who comment. I don't, like, I know some of the people who comment. It's their second account. Like, Mm-mm. I do... I know, I know. Like, I know. Like, I super know. Lalo na, kunwari, lalo na, ko, lalo na pag sa live ko na, I know when it's someone's second account nakakilala ko. Like, I'm 100% sure the way they type pa lang. Sobrang sure na ako. Like, nakahuli na ako once or twice na akala ko friend ko. Tapos, nagko-comment pala nang ganun sa live ko. But it's fine. Like, there, ah, oh, wala. Hindi naman ako masyadong affected. When I started out sa live, hindi ko, nung nag-start ako sa live, hindi ko kaya. Like, nung nag, like the very first few lives ko, kung people were hating on me, and end ko siya kasi naka-hurt ako. Oh. Pero ngayon, ngayon wala na. As in, people can come in my life anytime. Game lang. Sobrang <laughs> you, no problem na daw. You develop din ata yung pagiging, ano, di ba, immune to it. Parang there's a certain yeah. point na parang paulat-ulat na lang. Wala na bang ibang mas masakit dyan? Parang ito na lang palagi. Pero, Uh-oh. pero pag gano'n natin, hindi mo sila friends. Oh my gosh. Kinat off yeah. mo na ate. Kinat off mo na those oh, people. like I don't talk to them anymore. Wala na wala. That's good. So, was there at a, a time na you weren't confident in your body and how did you overcome that? Yeah, don't like start talk na fitness journey ko. Again, I started out really, really big and my, I lost a lot of weight. Honestly, if I'm being open here, I had an eating disorder. Um, I didn't puke my food but I did not eat. Mm-mm. I'd go three or four days without eating and then have one salad and then go another few days without eating. And from 170-ish, I ended up being 110 pounds. And I looked at my body and I wasn't happy. I still saw myself super fat. And I felt so bad about how I felt because I was so tired. I wasn't eating. I wasn't enjoying. This was high school pa. Um, I wasn't enjoying with I wasn't enjoying basically when I ate out with friends. That's the only time I'd eat and I'd feel super bad na. I'd have to go home and run five to six kilometers on the treadmill, work out, and then not eat again the next day or just have a bowl of fruits. Like, no joke yon. Like, ganun yung routine ko. Tapos when I go to school, di ako kakain. Like, magjujuice lang ako or something. Like, it got to that point. So I really wasn't happy with my body. And then when... Nag-cave. I got sick. Eh. I got sick. I got hospitalized when I was in high school. Then I gained a little weight back. And I really had to talk to a nutritionist. My mom had to look for a nutritionist for me talaga, to help me out of that slump. Because I feel like if you don't address it with a professional, it's gonna snowball. Lang. I continue snowballing into something you can't control Weird. anymore, which is what almost happened to me. I mean, I did gain that weight. I hated my body so much. As in, sobra. Plus, eventually, when I started lifting and I got exposed to more women, like, gaining muscle, showing muscle, from thin, nagigain ng weight, tapos happy sila, dun umiba yung mindset ko. And Is when that... I started doing actual sports, dun parang umiba yung mindset ko. Is that the reason, Ate, kung bakit ka naging active then? Because of your eating disorder before? Or you really wanted to be active na? Uh, my mom, when I was a kid, kasi my mom would enroll me in like a lot of different sports. Mm-mm. So I was really active before pa. But I was just fat. Like, I don't know. I was just really fat as a kid, I guess. Tapos pumasok siya sa head ko na, if you're fat, you're never gonna be good enough. Like, when I was younger talaga, I was bullied for being fat. Like, I remember my doctor, okay, uh, if, anyway, I remember my doctor one time as a kid, siguro eight or nine years old, mga ganun. Um, He put me, he made me step on the weighing scale and then I was super overweight and he lifted my shirt like up until my stomach and then he drew a tic-tac-toe and he was like, ang taba mo talaga, no? Napaka-unprofessional! Oh my gosh! Yeah. I remember him doing that and my mom would just laugh because I was a kid pa, so I guess parang akala nila funny-funny na. Yeah. I am lost for words. <laughs> Ate, ang rude nila. Ang rude nung, ano, 
nung health professional. Never gonna no, forget kasi he had like a relatively long fingernail. I remember that so well. He had a relatively long pinky and he drew the tic-tac-toe thing. And I remember, kasi syempre pag mataba ka, tapos nag-press ka, di ba mag-white yung line? Oo. Parang ginanan niya ako. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, ang taba mo. Tapos parang, okay. Ano lala? Pero guys, don't do yung ano ah, crush diet. It's not yeah, sustainable. Don't, don't, it's not and it's not sustainable. healthy. Kung Again, kailangan... I ended up in hospital yeah. for two weeks. I be lahat. I was dehydrated. My hair was falling off. I was breaking out. Grabe. It was really bad. It was really bad. Never ko na yun ulit uli, uulitin. Talaga. Never. I love eating. I love food. Yeah. Just saying. If you want to lose weight, you can lose it through more sustainable Uh-oh. options. For example, Uh-oh. tracking your calories. Pero never do crash diet. Kasi Uh-oh. people na I heard who are suffering from their body image or suffering suffering with their body image, rather, they do Start crash diet. Up. Yeah, yeah. Yung water, water diet mm-hmm. lang. It's As, not healthy. Kailangan oh, mo din ng kailangan mo din ng rice kasi kailangan mo ng energy. That's carbohydrates. You need carbs. Yeah, you need yeah. carbs, you need fat, you need protein. Honestly, kaya when people ask me how many calories I eat to lose weight, I never give it. Like as a coach, I feel like it's so irresponsible if I tell people how many calories I personally eat. Kasi baka sundin nila and it might not be fit for them. Yeah. So I never yeah. give a number na I do. But like other coaches kasi they say eh, na parang, oh, kumakain ako ng 1-2. Kumakain ako ng 1-3. And people just instantly copy. And I really, really hope na people don't do that. Like you have to figure out how many calories you actually need. Kasi yeah. some people, some people they follow kahit yung dati, yung 800. Somebody was doing 800. May artista, Angel, Angel Oxen ba? I'm not sure. Pero somebody mm. was doing the 800 na diet. Calorie and people, people were copying it. It's 800. Oh my gosh. Um, that's what. Because I mean, that's for one me, meal and one snack. Kasi for Parang me, good. kasi for me ate, I'm 4.11, pero my calorie count is 1.3, highest 1.5 na per day. Yun na yung highest. Pero, imagine 800. My height is 4.11. So, supposing na 5.6 ka, you can go 800. Kasi nga ako 1.3, ang 4.11 lang ako eh. Yeah. Diba? Parang, kasi, and it also is sobrang different. Kasi, parang ako, for my, sige, I'll give my maintenance since it's maintenance. I'm 5.2. I'm also small. Uh-huh. I'm 5'2". But my maintenance is around 2,300. Like, I can eat 2,300 without losing weight. Uh, without losing weight and without gaining weight. Like, no problem siya with me. But if other people follow that, there's a big chance that they'll gain weight. Yeah. It really depends. So, people have to actually, people will have to actually check talaga. Yeah. Madami namang online sources to check for that eh. You don't yeah. necessarily have to hire someone. Yeah, and if you want to check yung calorie deficit na kailangan nyo, just check it online. Don't copy somebody else's. Yeah. Kasi you need to make your own plan. Hindi pwede yung kopya lang. Kasi magkakaiba tayo ng katawan. Iba-iba yung nutrients, yung levels yeah. of activity. You also need to yeah. take that in consideration. Kung lagi kang naglalakad, mas mataas dapat yung calorie mo. So, Ate, how do you build a positive body image? From that experience, how did you, how did you build yours? Kasi, di ba, again, I gained, I, I was super fat and then I lost sobrang daming weight. I have those two photos. My peak, like, at my peak na sobrang taba ako and then at my peak na sobrang payat ako and a photo of me in the hospital. And I look at it all the time. Like, I constantly look at it and remind myself na, I can't go back to either two. And I just have to find, like, an in-between. Mm-hmm. So, that that's for me. But I do, when I do have clients, I always suggest lang na, take a day one photo. Write how you feel with that day one photo. And keep it. It doesn't matter if you look at it every day. You don't have to. Just keep it. So eventually, down the line, 30 days later, 40 days later, 100 days later, 2 years later, you'll go back to that photo, see that specific photo and how you felt on that day, and then go back and look at yourself now. And I guarantee 100%, it's sobrang different. I love that's that. What I do. Yeah. Kasi parang... And that's what I do. Kasi parang... 
Mm-mm. Kasi parang tracking your own progress helps you to stay on track din eh. Kasi sometimes hindi ka laging motivated with what you're doing. So yeah. having to see your progress kung gano'n ka nakalayo will help you to stay on track. And also parang hindi ka rin mag fall back to where you started yeah. when you feel a little bit derailed or distracted. Yes. So ate, so as a content creator, creating content about fitness, have you ever experienced then mga mansplaining, mga mali ang ginagawa mo, mali ang calorie a deficit? Lot, a lot. A lot. Uh, when people don't know that I'm a coach, when they initially don't know that I'm a coach, people usually try to explain to me what I'm doing wrong. But the thing is, I'm very, very experienced and book-based. So people can't come at me. Like, when, lalo na, it's usually guys, I don't know. Usually guys go like, the weights you're carrying are fake, or your, your form is wrong. When people tell me my form is wrong, I always check first. I always check what my movement. And I asked around also. And if people tell me that I'm wrong and it's actually wrong, then fine. I will admit it. I always admit it. Like, even on my post, mm-hmm. I will I'll pin something going like, ah, sorry guys, kailangan mas naka-chest out pala. Stuff like that. But there are guys who will come at me and say, that, that weight you're squatting is fake. Fake yung weights mo, mali yung form mo. And I'd show them what I do, how to, the only way to combat it is to show them. So I'm like, This is 45, this is 35, this is 15. If you add it all together, it's this. Then you add the bar. Maybe you don't know how to add. I'm doing it here for you. I do stuff like that. Because that's the only way you teach people not to be rude to you. Eh. I, the only way to combat rudeness talaga. I don't know why. On TikTok especially, the only way to combat rudeness is to be nice. But like, kind of rude also. Para lang, passive, ag- passive aggressive. Oh, yeah, you have to be passive aggressive talaga kasi people won't stop eh. They really won't stop. Yeah. Nakita ko yung post mo na yun ate. Okay, dito tayo. Itong, itong bar na to or basta yung ate, what do you call yung round thingy na inaatas uh, yung sa bar? Ayun. Yung so, so, itong plate na to ganito, 15, ito, 10, ito, 15, 10, yeah. oh, ito, i-plus mo. Natawang-tawa ko ng video na yun. Nakita ko yun. I, na yun. I've only done that twice. There was one more person who tried to cancel me talaga. Like, I don't know what in the world was going on sa head niya. Kasi all I said sa post ko was, if your last rep doesn't look like this, and it was me relatively like having a hard time pushing it up, Mm-mm. you're not trying hard enough. But I, I put that. And then somebody said, na, why are you shaming? Why are you shaming people? Stuff like that. And I stitched that person. I yeah. stitched that person no words. It was just that to math na, yung math na ah, parang, I get it, I get it. And the uh-huh. person blocked me and apologized. Blocked me first and then the next day apologized. Kasi <laughs> may mga ganun talaga. Like, I don't know. Sometimes people just want to have something to say, I guess. Yeah, and some want to hate on. Parang mm. lahat na lang kukomentan nila. Kaya minsan masaya rin talaga makapagbardagulan. I don't know if it's like that for other social media platforms. But on TikTok, parang on people TikTok, are... Yeah. Parang, bakit konting comprehension naman? Ibig sabihin, uh-huh. you need to try hard. Kaya ka nagsishake. Yan yeah. yung meaning ng video. Konting comprehension Actually, you know, naman. A lot of girls na papansin ko talaga na guys like mansplaining talaga. Sobra. There was this other TikTok content creator. Um, she's a power lifter. So you're not supposed to touch the bar when she, when you're lifting. And she somebody touched the bar and she was like, this is so frustrating. And people were commenting below na, parang okay eh de maputol na likod mo or parang hindi kinoko parang they were they were really like hindi mali kasi yung ginagawa mo nagwo-worry lang si kuya stuff like that and the girl was like you guys don't understand i'm a power lifter you're really not supposed to touch the bar i'm trying to set a record for myself and uh, i'm trying to push myself more and the guy is supposed to only catch me if i'm falling na and he actually held the bar and i was doing fine And a lot of guys came and like explaining to her na parang 
mali ka, mali iyan. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm a coach, first of all. Like, she's saying, I'm a coach, first of all. And I have a coach, second. So, what are you talking about? Parang ganun. Ang dami yung sobrang talaga. Nakakainis talaga pag nagmamansplain. Lalo na if you've been doing it for a long time. And when you click on their profiles, it's just people playing ML. No offense, but it's just people <laughs> playing ML. Or like posting oh, weird na videos. Right? I don't, yeah. I don't really like mansplaining. Parang not parang, only is it rude, parang nakaka-insulto rin siya. It's insulting, yeah. especially if you've been in the field for a really long time. So yeah. nung sinasabi mo, parang di ko alam yung ginagawa ko. This is literally my job. Yeah. I've worked hard yeah. for my experience for this. Diba, yeah. ate? So, ate, did you ever feel like you were working under pressure or like you were working under a microscope? Kasi you're a woman in, a, in the fitness industry. And were there experiences where people had made the assumption that you don't understand how to do your job? Especially as a fitness coach then. I have to be careful when I answer this kasi I might get a few people. But... I, I've had, when I started out on TikTok, uh, when I was in TikTok, I didn't experience this at all, zero. Like, no issues with anyone, zero. As in, all the coaches, male or female, super welcoming. The clients are really nice. Yeah, It's a pretty good environment when you're not on social media. But since I'm on SOCMED and I go live, I know of, other people who have said things like, ah, babae lang kasi siya, kaya madami siyang followers. I've had that said by other creators. I've had people say na, ah, hindi, kasi naka-short siya, kaya madaming nagpo-follow. And I don't think it works like that. Kasi if it's just that, people wouldn't stay for my lives and my content, for sure. Because yeah. I don't, Always like in big shirts lang naman eh. So, yeah, and also like I think kasi yours is a mixture of motivation and fitness content. Yeah. So yeah. parang you have a message for every anate. Nilalagyan mo ng caption. It's not just kung shorts lang naman yung basihan. Eh, ang daming nakashort sa TikTok. Yeah. Parang TikTok is much yeah. more complex than that. And also, marketing yourself online is much more complex than that. Hindi yeah. lang maganda ka eh, magbabiral ka na. If you can see, like, maraming mas maganda sa'yo, maraming mas sexy, mas maraming yeah, yeah, shorts. Yeah, yeah. Parang there are so many factors of how you can go viral. So, blaming it on just But the shorts. I've heard that. Nakainis! I've, I've had that na yung babae kasi. And kasi, when I started out on TikTok, I... Ako, sige. Okay. When I started out on TikTok, I didn't have a lot of followers. And there were a few people na I knew of who had a lot of followers na. And parang sila, sila pa, sila pa talaga yung nag-comment na babae kasi siya. And our following is sobrang different. It's just that lang talaga na parang these were people na I actually looked up to when I started on TikTok. And then sila pa yung mismo nagsasabi na parang ah, babae kasi siya. Nakakainis yung ganun kasi parang he, they don't see the hard work that they've been putting in. Parang lahat na lang gender. What if yung following mo rin are girls who want to yeah. parang lift their glutes or like yeah. build on their glutes, yung hamstring. Hindi mo naman alam yun eh. Like you don't know yung percentage ng following niya. If yeah. it's mostly male, then maybe that argument is valid. Pero what if my female Uh-oh. then or halos pantay? So, pantay yung sa akin, I check eh. It's a good, like, 49, 49, 50, uh, 51. Oh, diba? So parang, so, parang you can't really blame it on just the gender. Uh-oh. Na parang, yeah. oh, you, you've built your following because you're a Uh-oh. female or you're a woman. Uh-oh. So, ate, how did you handle that? Did you confront them about it? I never confronted them, but I never really, like, talked to them ulit. I don't like wasting my space and my time eh, with people or like on people who aren't worth it. This is something I've realized over like the span of like a few years, the past few years lang din, na parang wala nang time to spend on like people who are trying to pull you down. Yun lang. Yeah. It's a waste of time din eh, trying to convince them to think otherwise. Yes. Kasi di rin naman sila makikinig eh. And parang mm. they have their own version of their reality. Mm. So kung anong gusto yeah. nilang isipin, bahala na sila. Yeah. 
So, Ate, this is my last question. Have you ever heard of derogatory language because of the nature of your work? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, because I'm a coach, I need to be extra, extra friendly to everyone. Mm. So, I've had people say na malande ako. I've heard people say na, well, well, most of the time, yun lang naman, na parang malande, flirty, ganon. It's not that derogatory, but like, it's something na if a regular person would hear it, parang ma-hurt sila. Yeah. Well, ako hindi na ako na-offend sa ganon. Parang, I just like talking to people, so wala na ako magagawa about it. But, yeah, when I think, a lot of people really get judgy. Lalo na when I was doing bikini nga, I did it like once or twice lang. Um, when I'd be in the bikini and things like that, people would be like, hindi ka ba nahihiya? Parang binabenta man yung katawan mo. Stuff like that. I've heard things like that. I just ignore because I know naman eh. I know the truth eh. I think at the end of the day, if you know your truth and you really, really believe 100% in your own truth, what other people say around you won't matter anymore. Yes, it's the intention that matters din eh. Yeah. yeah. People are gonna think what they want to think about. Yeah. And the only time na ma-hurt ka talaga is if it's true eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kasi kung sino may konting truth to it. Yeah. Like, I really, really do believe if someone calls you malande or says like, stuff like wrong, mukha kang pokpok, whatever. Like, stuff like that. Ma-hurt ka lang if there's truth in it eh. But if yeah. there's no truth in it, you might be like, huh, but ka ganyan? But after that, you can just shrug it off. It really won't matter at the end of the day. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So to people who hear those derogatory language or unnecessary mm. comments that you don't understand what you're doing because mm. you're a female in a male-dominated space, you don't have to be affected by it because it's the intention and the vision that you have at the end of the day. So that's it. Thank you so much, Ate Lexi, for visiting my podcast. Is there anything that you'd like for to having me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Follow me on TikTok and IG. Same username. It's at underscore Lauren Alexify. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. That's all there is to say about this week's episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get updates about our guest for next week's stories and insights. Or you can also join our Facebook group, Stories About You and Me, a podcast by Too Chic. You can find the link in this episode's caption. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye!